reading the scripture from Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Let us pray. Father God, we gather here today to celebrate a life well lived. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity. We thank you for us giving us the opportunity to experience and see what a uh, real husband, what a real father, what a real grandfather, what a real man of God looks like. Father, we ask that you let the works of his hands and the content of his character and the love that he shared to so many of us over the years be acceptable in your sight. And Father, as we prepare to commit his body back to the ground, Father, I can hear you say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. Now I will make you ruler over many. Father God, we, we, we ask you, Father, that those of us that are left behind, Father, that you will forgive us of our sins and create in us a clean heart. Father, that you will help us to live lives that are, uh, that are acceptable, Father, that you will help us live lives that are, that are uplifting, Father. We thank you and praise you and we ask you all these things in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Today uh, is, a, is a different day. It's a special day. It's a day that we have to take some, do some things differently, go a different way. So I will try to be brief in, in, in what I do, but it's, I, could, I mean, I could talk about my father all day. Uh, first, I want to give honor to, 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 to the honor and the glory to uh, and praise to the creator, the redeemer. The one that sits high and looks low, God the Father. Without you, I am nothing, so I give you the praise in all that I do. I can't explain what an honor, nor can I help you understand the privilege that my family has given me to speak about our Father. So I will start simply with a thank you as they know how much my pops, our Father, meant to us. I first want to thank my mother Esther, the matriarch of our family, the blueprint, the map, the backbone of our family. My brother Jonathan, one of the hardest working people I know. No big brother could be more proud of you than I am. To my sister Joanne, simply the glue that keeps us together and grounded. And those that truly know her know exactly what I mean. To my sister Janine, the true rebel of our family. No matter the odds, she will fight to the end. And you kind of got to respect her for that. As it relates to my siblings, it's, it's, it's always been the four of us. Four distinct and different personalities that our parents just knew how to manage. I thank you all for this opportunity and under these circumstances, I will be brief. On April 3rd, 2020, in the early mornings, the morning hours, my mother calls me. And as I look at the phone, I know immediately that we, I, have entered a new season. To us, our father was everything. Even in the beginning, his presence filled the room. His voice could calm you. His smile consumed you. The funny thing was, we, we took that time with him for granted. We believed all kids must have the same thing we had. Because we're no more special than anyone. This is how God would bless all families, all sons, all daughters. And for me, it was like having a real life superhero living right in our home. But what we later realized is being our father and being the man that he was, was simply a choice. 
not all fathers make and not all men choose. So maybe favor is what we have. Maybe favor is what we've been blessed with. Because you can't choose your family. So today we celebrate our father. His life, a man who made the choice to be a great dad, no matter the cost. My family is entering a new season. Ecclesiastes 1 reads, 3, 1 reads, to everything there is a season, a time for every activity under the heavens. With my father, every idea or plan was born with teaching us something always in the background. He wanted to manifest growth in our spirit and to destroy stereotypes and misconceptions. And to have doubt in one's own ability to die off to plant success in our soul and to embed seeds of confidence and imagination in our heart and our minds. When we were very young, my father took us out of the city and he moved us to Vienna, Virginia. When we got there, we weren't too happy and somewhat confused. An all white community? What could he be thinking? But this is the true genius of my father. He thought this lesson through in all the way. My father wanted us to understand the real world, so he created a microcosm of real life to help us understand what the world would be like when he could no longer come to our rescue, to our aid. For me, he wanted me to understand as the firstborn that the world won't always see me as he sees me. For Jonathan, he wanted him to understand that what, what the youngest of families don't really find out till it's too late, that the world won't love him as much as his father loves him. Joanna and Janine needed to understand that the respect and love that they received from our father and our mother would not always be that way in their journey through life. But here's the genius in the man. That cul-de-sac where we live, that place where we would be tested and build the confidence and fortitude we all carry today. As we walked to school from that neighborhood with those same kids to Louise Archer, a school built by a black woman, a teacher who wanted to fight for education for African-American students. And most of the kids going there didn't even know it. That church across the street, First Baptist Church of Vienna, where we spent the next 20 years shaping who we are as people and building our Christian faith. A simple plan. Did only he and our mother could see so that we would be prepared for life no matter the odds. He understood what planting those seeds in us would bring at harvest time. Ecclesiastes 3, 2 says, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to reap harvest. And his harvest will continue on with us. To many, my father was the first first cowboy they've ever seen and for most of us the first black cowboy they've ever heard of for the four of us he was like having our own Django riding off to work every day only to return that night to make sure we were safe a strong man a confident man our father there was nothing he couldn't do or at least so we thought we took so much pride in calling him our father but the funny thing is, he took so much pride in the four of us. As if we made him who he was. As if we gave him strength and power in some way. As if we kept him going. As if every breath he took was simply to keep us safe. His legacy will live on through the four of us. Our strength will come from him. We will love as he loved. We will live as he lived. As if Every moment was the last one, and he needed to get everything he could out of it. And the Bible speaks to my father's legacy. Psalms 127, verse 3 through 5 says, Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward for him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hand. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. He will not be put to shame when he confronts his accusers at the city gate. An example of a husband. I heard you speak about that, Donnie. My mother is one of the strongest women that I have ever met. We get our drive from her. That never give up. No matter the odds. 
She is a proud woman who has her own beliefs, her own thoughts, her own dreams. This should give you some indication of the type of man my father was. To build a family with a woman like that, you must be strong, understanding, intelligent, patient, and have the ability to love unconditionally. This was our father. With the strength my mother possesses, she still allowed my father to lead our family, stand as the head of the house, as she created such an incredible support system that allowed him to become the man we honor here today. They enjoyed life together. They were spontaneous in love. They were, they loved without boundaries and together they set an example that my siblings and I will admire for a lifetime. So my siblings and I will try to fill the gap that this new season will bring. Being there for my mother at all she needs. There's no journey too far, no mountain too high. It's that is the charge our father left behind. Fifty-four years married. Fifty-four years together. Ecclesiastes 9 and 9 says, Enjoy the life with your wife whom you love all the days of your life that he has given you under the sun because that's your portion in life and your toil at which you toil under the sun. To toil. Now look that up. To toil means to work extremely hard without interruption constantly. That is truly my father. We talk about his faith. Hebrew 11 one says, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And the first time I read it, I didn't even understand it. So I went to the NIV version and it says, faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see. And I still didn't understand it. So I went to my father. I said, dad, I don't, I don't know how you get faith, and I, I, I don't know where to find faith. Um, did you and mom save a little faith for me, or did our grandfather leave a little bit in his will so I can hold on to it? If I have faith in the palm of my hand, can I use it like currency? And then when I'm praying and I'm asking for you, I can pull that currency out and, and say, look, I can pay my way. My father takes a deep breath and he says, son, let's try this. Go to Hebrew 11 and 6 and see if that helps you. Hebrew 11 and 6 read, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Impossible? I mean, I go to church. I, I help my mother. I mean, what you mean impossible? Impossible, unable to be true, perform, affected, unable to exist to have ever happened. I got nervous. So I read on and it said, he that cometh to God must first believe that he is. And I, and I do. Uh, and it says, and he that he, that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Well, how do I know if I'm being diligent? So I looked it up. It says, constant in effort to accomplish something, attentive and persistent, doing anything. I don't even know how to be diligent or have I been diligent. So I go back to my father and he says, uh, son, listen, go do Joshua 1 8. But I need you to promise me one thing. Every time you pause, I want you to use the word diligent. Every time there's a comma, you say diligent. Every time the sentence ends with the period, you say diligent. So Joshua 1 8 with the promise. I made to my father, uh, don't let this book of laws depart from your mouth. Diligent. Meditate on it day and night. Diligent. So that you are careful to do everything written in it. Diligent. Have I not commanded you? Joshua 1, 8, 9. My father was a true man of faith whether he was leading the choir as the minister of music or quoting scripture or playing the organ or the piano. He was what I call a real M-O-G, a real man of God. 
It was in his walk. It was, it was the way he talked. It was in his mannerisms. It was the foundation on which his principles would stand. In Proverbs 4, 1, and 1 through 4, it says, My children, listen to listen when your father corrects you. Pay attention. Learn good judgment, for I am giving you good guidance. Don't turn away from my instruction. For I, too, was once my father's son, tenderly loved by my mother. My father taught me, take my words to heart, follow my commands, and you will live. So I went with this. On April 7th, 2020, at 10 o'clock in the morning, with family, relatives, friends, together, we celebrate the life of my father, Joseph Houston Hagler III, a husband, our father, our friend, our mentor, or simply just dad. I love you, Pops. When you get to the gate, they're going to know they got a good one. We're going to follow your lead, Pops. We're going we're gonna to work together. We're going to take care of our mother. Day. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And some lonely nights. But when I, when I look around, yeah, I think things over. You know what? All of my good days outweigh my. I think those words were 
very much worthy of a life well lived by a great man of God, first of all, a great husband, a great father, a great relative and friend. Let us pray. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and all the God of all consolation, who consoles us in our affliction, so we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. Man that is born of a woman has but a few days, and those days are full of misery. He cometh up like a flower, and he is struck down. For as much as it has pleased the Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased brother, Joseph Houston Hagler III. We therefore commit his body to the kingdom, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Let us pray. All wise and most merciful Heavenly Father, we come to you on this beautiful, breathtaking day, thanking you for your many blessings. We ask you to bless the Hagler family in a special way. We ask you to keep them, protect them, wrap your loving arms around them, for we know that weeping endures for a night. But joy, God's joy, comes in the morning. So we ask these and all of the blessings in the matchless and the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Family, we ask that you continue to pray for one another in the days and the weeks to come. And we say to you, be encouraged, for God shall and will continue to take care of us. This is the services for our beloved Joseph Houston Hagler III. The services have now been concluded. At your leisure, you may consider yourself excused, and you may return to your cause. Thank you, Mr. Russell. <laughs>
still it's still live right now. You fine. Yeah.